All right, let's ask our last question for this lesson. Question number 48. At what point do we stop praying for healing and just accept our condition? I've heard this question asked a number of different ways, posed a number of different ways, uh, encouraged a number of different times. You pray and you ask the Lord for healing. Guess what? If healing doesn't come, you just assume that God wants you to have it for the rest of your life and you stop praying, just accept it. Just accept God's will. It can sound so noble. And when somebody who has a sickness uh, says that that's what they're doing, that they're just resigning to live with it for the rest of their life, it can also sound noble because it sounds like they have a high trust in, in the Lord. But it's not consistent with scriptures. So what do the scriptures teach as to why someone should stop praying for healing and just accept their condition? I think there are only two reasons why anybody should stop pursuing healing, and that, those are these. Number one, if the sick person dies, you should stop pursuing healing. Uh, you see this in the story of David. Remember when uh, David's child was just newborn and became very, very ill as actually a judgment from the Lord? Um, and what did David do? He fasted and he prayed and he yearned and he begged the Lord for healing, and then the child died. And what did David do? He stood up, he cleaned off his face, and he went and he ate a meal, and he stopped praying for healing because his child had died. And he said, I don't need to mourn anymore. My child is in heaven, and one day I will be with him. So if the sick person dies, you stop praying for healing. But number two, a little bit less obvious. If God reveals through divine revelation that he is not going to heal. I don't know how often God does this. I have not heard a lot of testimonies about God doing this. Remember when we talked about Paul's thorn in the flesh, Paul asked three times that God would take the thorn away, and God said, no, I'm not taking it away. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Some people say, well, there's a great example of someone who's asking for a sickness to go away. God says, no, I want you to have it. It's going to stay there, and it's going to stay there for a purpose. But Paul was told that through divine revelation. But remember, if you go back in our series a couple questions ago, I don't believe the Bible teaches at all that Paul was talking about a sickness when he said, take this from me. Uh, I believe that he was talking about a, a spiritual persecutor, a messenger of Satan is what Paul called him. And so, I don't know how often the Lord reveals to people that he is not going to heal them but I'll, of course, give him that right to do so. And if he does so, if you're praying for healing, and if the Lord reveals to you in a powerful way, in a clear way that he is not going to heal, then stop praying for healing. But short of that, continue to persist in prayer and ask God to heal. Jesus taught us that that is the mark of a righteous, faithful man, the person who continues through month after month, year after year, even decade after decade, and doesn't give up and continues to persist in prayer, Jesus says that is a person who is demonstrating faith. That's not a faithless person who's not trusting God. That is a faith-filled person, someone who persists and continues in prayer, even when the answer doesn't come at the time that they want. Persistence demonstrates our faith. It does not show a lack of faith. Christ's prayer in the garden is not our model when praying for sickness. Christ's prayer in the garden is one of the greatest prayers in the Bible. It's one of the most beautiful, tender, amazing portraits of our Christ. When he is laying there, uh, experiencing hematidrosis, uh, blood is literally oozing out of his body. He is under feeling the weight of sin. He is feeling uh, the weight of God's judgment that is beginning to be poured out on him. And he said, Father, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. While that's a wonderful, amazing prayer and one that should be preached with passion forever. And so much can be gleaned and learned from that prayer. It is not our model on how we are to pray for sickness. Jesus gave us that model earlier in the Gospels, 
And that's not it. So if when praying for the sick, if when praying for healing, if you find yourself always resorting back to Christ's uh, prayer in the garden, always saying things like, but not my will, but thine be done. Lord, I want, I, I want Jim to be healed, but not my will, but thine be done. If you find yourself doing that, Stop it. <laughs> That's not your model for praying for the sick. We're given that all throughout other places in the New Testament, but not that prayer in the garden. We are to persist and persist and persist in prayer for the sick. Listen to some of these verses from the New Testament. Colossians 4.2, continue steadfastly in prayer. Ephesians 6.18, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. Romans 12.12, 12, be constant in prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. And how about this one? Luke 18, 1 and 8. Jesus, it says of Jesus, and he told them a parable to the effect that they had always to pray and not lose heart. Remember what happens in that parable? We have this picture of this woman coming before a judge and she's begging him for justice, begging him for justice, begging him for justice, and he's not giving her what she wants. But yet she doesn't give up. She persists and she continues to pray and she continues to ask the judge for relief and for justice. Finally, it says because of her importunity, because she didn't give up, because she kept pestering the judge, he gave her what she wanted. And then the end of that parable in verse 8, it's Jesus asked this question, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Why does he ask that question? Because the parable was showing us what faith-filled prayer looks like. It's prayer that doesn't give up. It's prayer that doesn't just ask once or twice or three times or maybe for a year or two and then just say, you know what, I'm giving up. No, faith-filled prayer is fueled by the Holy Spirit and it continues and it continues to expect and ask for breakthrough. At what point do we stop praying for healing and just accept our condition? I don't know. Did, did the woman with the issue of blood who had, uh, uh, who had issue of blood for 12 years, what if she would have stopped at year 11? What if she would have said, you know what, I've been praying about this issue, this health problem for 11 years. You know what? It must be that God just wants me to stay ill. It must be that God just wants me to suffer with this affliction forever. No, she didn't carry that mindset. She never stopped pursuing healing. When she heard that there was a healer walking through her town, she did everything she could to get to him so that she could just reach out and touch the hem of his garment. That's the picture of faith. That's the, that's the picture that I want to keep in front of everybody who's been suffering with ongoing illness for some time. Continue on. Press on. Praying more. Praying for one more year. Praying for two more years does not show that you don't trust God. It shows that you have caught what Jesus taught and that you are staying persistent in prayer and that you're expecting a breakthrough. And man, does that kind of spirit, does that kind of tenacity please the Lord and it honors Jesus greatly.